Humans have long desired immortality. However, they have yet to discover the secret to immortality. Humans appear to be a long way from accomplishing such a feat, which I believe is absolutely impossible. However, some animals have achieved the key to immortality to some extent, because some incidents showed that they were living even after being beheaded. There are some incredible animals in the world that are blessed with amazing features that can survive having their hearts removed or being beheaded. Also, there is an animal that will survive being cut into numerous parts of its body. If chopped into 100 pieces, each of which grows into a separate organism. You're going to wonder how you're going to kill such an animal. So in this video, I present to you the top 10 animals that live after death. You'll not believe your eyes after witnessing these animals. Therefore, stay with the video till the end because it's going to be a spectacular video. Number 10 on the list is the cockroach. It is said that cockroaches can withstand a nuclear bomb because they can tolerate a lot of radiation compared with other animals. They also function like zombies because if their heads are taken off, they will not die. They can survive for up to seven days. You would believe that most insects die when their heads are sliced off. However, cockroaches do not. Unlike other insects, they do not require the use of their heads to breathe. Instead, they use unique body structures to do it. The spiracle is the name of this structure. Cockroaches have a little opening on their bodies known as a spiracle. This hole houses a respiratory tube that allows them to inhale oxygen and exhale carbon dioxide. The valves of these structures on the bodies of cockroaches are usually closed and only open when oxygen is taken inside the body. Cockroaches, unlike humans, do not bleed, which is another explanation for cockroaches' survival after popping their heads off. Cockroaches have an open circulatory system, which means that their blood is pumped into a cavity rather than flowing via blood vessels. The wound closes due to clotting after the head pops off, so they survive for seven days or more. But beyond that time, they die, not from the head cut, but due to lack of food consumption. Number nine, the turtle. Throughout its existence, the turtle faces a variety of problems. Water pollution, over-exploitation, and hunting are just a few of the issues. These stumbling blocks often result in their heads being chopped off. However, because of their superior body traits, they can endure losing their heads. They can survive for almost a thousand hours without a head. Yes, you heard me correctly. It's one with three zeros. They use a structure called the cloaca to absorb oxygen. This is a hole in the turtle's back. This structure can be found near the rectum, where the urinary system and rectum are empty. With the help of contracting muscles, the water is driven out of the cloaca. The turtle can receive oxygen from the water thanks to blood vessels present in the cloaca location. To put it another way, they inhale through their buttocks. They can breathe as well thanks to an anaerobic process. Number eight, the bee. If I say that it is possible for a dead lion to hunt someone, you'll say no, explaining that a dead animal can't hunt. However, you may be surprised to learn that bees are one species that could do harm to you if they are dead. A dead bee can be more dangerous than a dead lion. When bees are near death, they will cling to flowers and appear sluggish. They will drop off the flowers when they die. And you may find a number of these in your gardens near bee-friendly blooms. If you pick up a dead bee, it may sting you. For bee sting muscles to work, it is not necessary for the bee to be alive. The force of your weight on the bee's body can cause the venom to be injected. So take care and don't step on it. This is one tough creature. Even after death, this strong creature continues to sting. Number seven, chicken. Have you ever seen a chicken lurking around that doesn't have a head? I'm not talking about a ghost chicken with no head. The brain is in charge of controlling the human body. Unlike humans, when the head of a chicken is removed, the chicken's body is governed by its brain stem cells. According to some biologists, a chicken's skeletal architecture is one of the reasons it can live without its head. The cerebellum and brain stem are presumably intact if the chicken still has a bottom beat, indicating that basic motor capabilities and breathing breathing capacity are still available. However, the chicken does not have to live forever after its head is chopped off. It usually survives as a result of human error. Butchers are the ones who make the mistake the most. 
This occurs when they fail to cut the jugular veins. In 1945, a chicken named Mike had gone 18 months without a head. As a result, it was given the nickname Mike the Headless Chicken. The reason this chicken thrived for so long was that it was provided water and nourishment with the help of a dropper. Number 6 frogs. No, do not believe that all frogs will live after they have died, because the vast majority of frogs are incapable of doing so. The frogs I'm going to tell you about are located in the Alaskan rainforest and can survive after they die. More than 80% of the bodies of Alaskan wood frogs are submerged in water at the start of winter. When the water begins to freeze, their bodies do as well. Their limbs and the blood inside them freeze, and their hearts quit pumping as a result. They remain dead in the water for the entire season. They appear to be dead in the eyes of science because no blood flows through their bodies, and no part of their bodies moves or breathes. But once the temperature rises and the water unfreezes, these frogs start to live their normal lives once again. The frogs' frozen sections will defrost as the hibernaculum warms above freezing, and its heart and lungs will begin actively. The living dead, indeed. Number 5. Planarian flatworm. These worms are usually found in water, but they can also be found in damp areas such as under rocks or in stream trash. The intriguing thing about these worms is that if you cut them up, each bit will grow into its own worm. Cut some flatworms into pieces pieces, and the majority of the pieces will regrow into a complete body. They have special cells that help them regenerate a whole new worm from a single piece. These cells are found all over the worm's bodies. When planaria were exposed to high amounts of radiation, these supernatural cells managed to survive and eventually replace the cells that had died. If chopped into 20 pieces, it will make 20 flatworms with a head and a tail. If those 20 pieces are sliced into another 20 and so on, the process continues. So how many planarium worms do you believe can be generated in your opinion? Please respond in the comments section if you come up with the answer. Number 4. Jellyfish Jellyfish in the ocean do not always have enough options to mature properly, so many die young. Teratopsis dorni, popularly known as the immortal jellyfish, is a small, physiologically immortal jellyfish that may be found in temperate to tropical waters all over the world. I doubt any other species could pull off miracles like this jellyfish. They have the ability to reverse the life cycle. A human being is born as a baby, grows into an adult, gets old, and ultimately dies. But in the case of jellyfish, it begins life as an egg and develops into a fully developed jellyfish after passing through four to five stages of development. If it runs out of food or suffers physical harm after reaching this stage, it reverts to earlier stages of life and becomes younger. As a result of this mechanism, Teratopsis dorni is able to survive. Number 3. Salamander Salamanders have a lizard-like appearance. These animals are incredible, super creatures. They can regenerate themselves. After being cut down, they may easily regrow any section of their body. The freshly regenerated portions are so flawless that it is difficult to discern if the salamander's new body parts are original or regenerated because they can quickly restore damaged heart brain, and spine tissue. They can survive any deadly damage without dying because of this healing ability. The healing mechanism of salamanders has long been studied and observed by scientists. It will be beneficial to humankind if they are successful in understanding the process. Number 2. Snakes. Many people are afraid of snakes and would try to flee if they encountered one. The wonderful thing about the snake is that it can still injure you or inject you with poison, even if its head is chopped off. After being chopped, the energy in the snake's muscles lasts for several hours. They reserve this energy in order to push themselves to live as long as they can. They remain lethal during this period of time. The ions in the snake's nerves are still alive and will respond to stimuli, even if the snake has been dead for a few hours. Nerves react when a dead snake is touched or manipulated sending electrical impulses throughout the body and causing muscular movements. Even if their head is detached from their body, their head is still lethal. So never mess with the chopped head of a snake. Number 1. Octopus Octopuses are either profound creatures or deep-sea nightmare creatures, depending on who you ask. They are frequently depicted in fiction as slimy, eight-armed creatures waiting to pounce. However, after you get to know them a little better, you'll discover that, while weird and they appear to be aliens, these animals, possessing three hearts, are intriguing creatures. When the octopus's arms are chopped off, it survives. Not only that, but the arms are still functional. 
The arms are made up of roughly 60% neurons. As a result, these neurons serve as the arm's sole brain, which means that the arm can taste, touch, and act independently of the rest of the body's brain. In fact, these tentacles can function even if the octopus has been dead for a long time. Several studies were carried out at a university in London to investigate the octopus phenomenon. For weeks, they studied the survival of octopus tentacles. Seeing these incredible animals makes us wish that humans should be given similar superpowers. We wish to use these abilities to regenerate our limbs if they had been cut off. By reversing our life cycle, we can travel back in time to our childhood. We can also function without our heads. Are you willing to live without your head? What would life be like if we didn't have a head? Do you believe science will evolve to a point where people will be able to regenerate or exist without a head? Please share your ideas in the comments section. As always, thank you for watching the video. I'll see you all again soon. Later, everyone.